Hello and welcome to another design tutorial. I'm Angelo. Today I'm going to be talking about how to create warp text in Illustrator and transferring that over to your InDesign layouts. This could be for a magazine design, it could be for a poster design, it doesn't really matter. But what new users to InDesign will figure out pretty quickly is you're limited. There are some limitations in terms of what you can do to text in terms of the uh, warping features or distortion features. You can't do that sort of thing in InDesign. So a great way to apply that is to do it in Illustrator, save it and bring it over into InDesign. And as you see on my screen here, this is the, the end result, the outcome of um, warping your text. So it is. it does come over as an image and I'll get into that in a second. And I also added a slight Gaussian blur to this which you can also do in Illustrator. You can't have that, you can't do that in, in uh, InDesign. Don't get me wrong, InDesign has some amazing amazing effect features from drop shadows to inner shadow, bevel emboss and so on. But there are some limitations in terms of what you can do to text as you can see on my screen here. So we're going to be hopping back and forth from Illustrator back to InDesign and we'll, uh, we'll finish off with a result like this. Okay, so I'm going to go to my Illustrator and I'm just going to say create new. Now one thing you should note is try to have, try to mimic the same document size as your InDesign file. So I'm just going to click my print tab here. And because that's an A4, I'm just going to click my A4 here and one page is, one artboard I should say is fine. Hit create and there we go. Okay, so basically all I want to do here is uh, work on the one artboard and we're just going to type some text, distort it, add a Gaussian blur and then uh, bring it over to InDesign. And I'll show you there's two, there's a couple ways of doing that. Okay, so I'm just going to click on my type tool and then just click on my artboard and you'll see some warm ipsum text come in. Um, actually, let me do that again. So, yeah. And I'm just going to write the word static. No, ride static. And I want these to be on separate um, paragraph returns. So just do ride, return, static, return, and then uh, wave. Okay. Um, so that's good. I'm just going to grab my selection tool, hold my shift key, and scale that up until I get to about 100 point here. So 99, I'm just going to type in 100 there, and that's fine. I'm going to align this uh, to the center of my artboard, like so. And now, now I can start going going to format this text because I don't want it to be I don't want it to be my pro. I actually want it to be Gotham Black. And it's 100 point, but I'm also going to play with the uh, letting. I'm going to bring that in a little bit, okay? Because there's the letting's too spread out. Maybe 100, fine. I also want to uh, center align this, okay? So right here, click on your uh, text frame. And then where it says paragraph here, make sure it's aligned to the center. Now you can go back to your alignment and then center it back like so okay so this is where we start adding the effects so I'm gonna go up to oh, make sure that you're clicked on your your text frame go up to effect warp and there's there's quite a few here the one that I'm, I'm using today for this tutorial is wave okay my settings here this is exactly how I want them but there's a few points where you can um, change the type of wave uh, so it's a horizontal or vertical and see what works best for your specific design. I'm going to leave it on horizontal. Then you can change the bend of it. Okay, you can play with the uh, negative bend or go back into the positive. So 25 was where I had it, 27 is fine. And then you can play with the horizontal distortion and the vertical distortion and see uh, which which settings work best for you or when you're satisfied make sure that your preview option is checked on here in the bottom left hand corner otherwise you're not going to see what you're doing I'm just going to leave this to about yeah that's fine once you're satisfied just hit ok just as a side note if you don't want to use the, the wave style this little drop down gives you other options for flag 
uh, fisheye, writhe, so there's all kinds. I'm leaving mine for wave today and I'm just going to hit OK. So I'm going to go back to effect, blur, and I want to apply just a Gaussian blur just for, uh, just to make it a little bit, uh, give it a little blur effect to it. Okay, I'm gonna hit my preview. I have it to six uh, pixel radius. Uh, just keep in mind, if you crank up the slider, you're not gonna be able to see. So see, set it to something where it's still legible and um, you could tell that there's a slight blur to it. So I think I had mine at six. I'm gonna leave it there. Six is fine. I'll just type it right in, six, and hit okay. All right, so that, that would be it. So now I have my warped text and if you can see if I click on it you can still see the original type is still there so I can go in and edit this how I wanted to. So I want to bring this into InDesign. You could copy and then paste it in. I'm going to bring it into my um, libraries here. You can see I already have a white version and a black uh, version um, already in place there. So if I just drag and uh, click and drag this right into my libraries. It won't hold the formatting that we just uh, placed on this or applied to it. So while you're dragging it in, hold down the command key and then drop it in. And you'll see that there it is right there, okay? And that would be it. So I can go to my uh, back to InDesign, but before I do that, um, if you, another way of transferring this over is just going, if you want to Go to File, Export, Export As. You could save this. Um, you could rename it, export it, and then change it to transparent background color. And so there's no there's no background. And then change the screen resolution because it's using it for print purposes is either 150 or 300 is fine. And then save it as a PNG and save it uh, to your local drive and then import it that way, okay? So um, it has to be an image when you're putting it in, so only because you can't edit this text afterwards. So my suggestion is keep a master file, so you wouldn't close and not save this. Save it in case you ever have to revert back and make some changes. Um, you could just make the changes, put the updated version in your library, and then bring it into InDesign, okay? So now that I have that there, I'm gonna just go back to InDesign. And there's the, the one that I've already done. So I'm just gonna go scroll down to my second page here. I'm gonna click on my first layer here and I'm just gonna uh, make a black background here, properties, fill, black, and I like it 95% black. Okay, and I'm just going to go to my CC libraries here, and there's the version that I just made, although I did make a black version, so I want to place the white version, so I should have made this white. That's okay, I already have a white version here, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag that on, and then go ahead and just drag that onto your page, okay? Put my guides on here as a reference point. So you can see um, it looks blurry, but that was intentional, okay? So if you don't want to add the Gaussian blur, then you don't, you don't have to. I just figured with the words I'm using and the theme of this specific layout, I just thought it would be an, an added touch. One thing I did up here is um, I made another copy of this. So I'm just gonna do, uh, just make another copy by holding down Option or Alt on, a, on a Windows and drag down. And I just, I'm going to rotate it. So rotate it, but while you're rotating, hold the shift key so it's all the way like so. So actually, you, should, you could leave it like that, almost like a reflection. One added element that I did was I just grabbed one of the handles on the side, pulled it over, and then mimicked it as if it looks like a reflection, true reflection off something okay 
And then as a last point, all I did was I grabbed this one, hold down my shift key, and then grouped it. Command G or go up to object group. This way, when you're maneuvering it and moving it around a page, um, it comes in as one item, one object, rather than um, having to move them both together. And then I can just go back and align this to my page like so, and it already was, and that's it. That's how you make warp text and then bring it over. So again, if, if this needed to change, you would have to go back to your InDesign file, update it, and then just replace it, okay? It, just, it, it, it treats it like an image, so you would just replace the image altogether. That's a good way of adding warp text to your InDesign file. Now, you may be asking, why wouldn't I just do the whole thing in Illustrator? You sure can. But if this was a magazine um, uh, layout and you needed something like this to add, a, add to one of your feature stories or feature pages, that's how you would do it. Okay? That's today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye now.